Hi guys, so we're back talking about profile optimization for a couple other sites that we thought would be useful. So let's get started. We'll be starting with Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Realtor.com, and Zillow. I'm sorry, I forgot. I'm Amber. I'm from the Sun Valley office. I'm an agent concierge, and Shanna is your marketing content specialist. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and get started here with uh, Facebook. So I just want to briefly kind of go over um, getting Facebook set up. I think most people by now have a Facebook, but if you don't, um, to create a business account, you do have to have a personal account. They link them on Facebook. Um, so you either need to log into Facebook on your personal account or you need to create a personal account. Um, there's going to be a menu on the left-hand side of Facebook, and there's going to be um, a little flag. It also says pages, and that's how you will create your business page. Um, you want to make sure that you fill out all of your information. So you're going to make sure that you name your page, upload a professional headshot for your profile photo, um, and then upload a professional cover photo. And then you want to complete your page with your bio, um, phone number, website, address, business hours, and all of that good stuff. Um, and then a big thing is invite your friends on your personal page to follow your business page. Um, that starts up a following for you and kind of gives you a baseline um, of people following you and gets you kind of out there on people's timeline. And then one of the last things you want to do is connect your Instagram page to your Facebook page. Meta is kind of the umbrella company for Facebook and Instagram, so they connect really well. Um, so it's handy to have both of those connected. Um, so some best practices for Facebook, um, you want to post three to five times per week so that your content is staying relevant. There are a lot of people posting on Facebook all of the time. Um, so you want to make sure that you are consistently posting content, um, but you don't want to post more than two times in one day. Um, people kind of get a little oversaturated if you're posting four or five times a day. Um, you want to make sure that you're using creative captions and emojis to grab attention. Um, Facebook only has an certain amount of characters that it allows in the beginning of the post. So you want to make sure that when you're putting your caption in, it's short and sweet and kind of attention grabbing. Um, a program that a lot of people have been using is ChatGPT. Um, you can just type in there what your post is about and say create a social media caption and it does a really good job of coming up with captions and putting emojis in for you. So it's just kind of one of those like nice little life hacks. If you're not great at coming up with captions, it's a really easy way for you to come up with something creative. Um, make sure that when you are promoting your listings, you're using direct links to your listings and not just to your website itself. Um, when people are looking at a listing, if they're going to click on it, they want to go exactly to that listing. They don't want to have to go through your website and search it. They're probably going to immediately close out of your website and get frustrated and annoyed. So make sure that's that direct link. Um, you want to make sure that you're sharing a mix of professional, personal, and local content. Um, so that kind of goes along with that know, like, and trust. So your, your personal content kind of helps them get to know you, knowing that they, you're an expert in the local area helps them kind of like you, and then making sure that they know you're a professional helps them trust you. So just kind of that mix. Um, I recommend kind of the law of thirds where you do a third personal, a third local, and a third professional. Um, if you're hosting events, um, such as open houses or there's something going on in your office, um, use that event feature and invite people on Facebook. Um, that's a really handy feature, um, and it kind of helps promote your event, and it'll also put it as a local event in your area when people are searching for events. Um, so it's just more exposure for you. Um, make sure you're sharing to your story. So some of your um, posts that you really are wanting to pe have people see and engage with, put those on your story. Um, people who follow you, that story bar at the top of Facebook, that will automatically pop up for them, so they will be more likely to see it. Um, and mixing up your video, your content types. Um, so don't just post photos all the time, um, you know, like a photo and a caption that kind of gets boring. People like to see a mix of content. So use, um, use photos, use carousels, um, which is going to be just many pictures. So, you know, like eight to 10 photos. Um, and, you know, I know we say this all the time and I'm sure everybody is sick to death of hearing it, but make sure you're posting video. All of the social platforms right now are really, really pushing video. Um, interact with your followers and interact with other pages. Um, social media sites are just that. They are social. So you need to be commenting, liking, commenting back, sharing posts of other pages. Um, basically, being social on these sites is what's going to um, key you up so that um, Facebook's algorithm notices that you're active with other sites as well as on your page itself. And then, of course, you want to make sure that you are using calls to action. 
Um, so posting and consistency is great, but it um, is even better if you have a call to action. So asking people to share your post, comment on your post, um, just interaction in general, you know, follow the link below, anything like that um, really just kind of gets them to interact with you as well. All right. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about Instagram. Um, so if you don't have an Instagram account, you are going to need to create one. Um, that little um, name that everybody has on Instagram, um, that's called a handle. Um, so use something that highlights you as a realtor. So um, you might use something like um, Shanna Sells Homes or, you know, something like that that kind of highlights who you are. Um, know the laws in your area if you have to have your um, brokerage attached to your name or not. Um, if you have a personal Instagram, I recommend switching your personal Instagram to a professional account. The nice thing about Instagram is you don't lose any of your content or have to create a new page once you switch. You can use what you already have and switch it over. Um, if you want to keep your personal Instagram separate, um, just kind of like a family and friends thing, that's perfectly fine. I recommend creating a separate Instagram account um, for your business, however. And then again, connecting Instagram back to Facebook to make sure that those two are able to interact. Um, so the best practices with Instagram, um, again, posting one to two times a day max. Um, you definitely don't want to post again more than about five times a week on Instagram as well. Um, using stories on Instagram is really important. Um, Instagram pushes stories a lot, um, and you can really experiment um, with polls, links, stickers, things like that on your stories. Um, and the nice thing with Instagram and Facebook, again, is you can connect the content. Um, so if I didn't say that before, you can, anything you post on Instagram, you can automatically share to Facebook. And from Facebook, you can share to Instagram. So they're really compatible. Um, so you're not having to come up with different content or post to them separately. You can do it all at once. Um, Instagram right now is really pushing Reels. One of the things they did to compete with TikTok when it started to blow up was they created their Reels platform. Um, so I would recommend a minimum of two to three Reels a month that you're creating. So those are going to be um, more just short, fun video clips. Um, usually anywhere from about 7 to 15 seconds, um, just kind of throw them together, add some music. Um, you can copy some of the trends that are going on. Those are really going to be good. Um, but make sure you're posting reels. And again, reels are going to be video content. So like I said, we said it 100 times. We'll say it 100 more. Video is huge on social media right now. Um, Instagram is really um, big on looking at resolution of photos. So if you have a blurry or um, just not a low quality photo or video, um, I wouldn't bother posting it at that point because Instagram is going to suppress it. They are really um, a visual based platform. So they are looking for high quality photos and videos. Um, and again, they are looking for photos and videos. They're not looking for text. So if your graphic has a lot of text overlaid on top of it, um, Instagram um, Algorithm is going to look at that and say that that's not what our platform is about. That's not what we're looking for. Um, so a little text here and there. Um, adding captions is fine, um, but you don't want to have, you know, a photo with text all the way over the top of it. They're going to not, they're not going to love that. Um, Instagram has a great location feature and geotagging. So tag the area that you're in. Um, that's going to target people that are in or near that area um, and push those posts towards the top of their timeline when they're scrolling through. So you want to make sure you're using that. Um, again, mix up your content types. Use those carousels. Um, experiment with boomerangs, time lapse videos. Um, just kind of have fun with your content on there. Um, I know a lot of people hate posting, but I think once you kind of mess around and play with some of the features, I think people kind of think it's cool. Um, I know my grandmother got really into filters lately. <laughs> um, so. She's having fun with that. I think if my, you know, 78-year-old grandmother can have some fun on Instagram, I think you guys can probably play a lot around with it a little bit too. Um, it, it can be fun. Um, hashtags are big on Instagram. Um, I recommend uh, mixing in a um, personal hashtag. So um, like CB um, has hashtag be distinctive. Um, one of the things that's nice about that is if you type in be distinctive, a lot of our posts are going to come up on Instagram because it's kind of our personal brand. So if your um, hashtag again is, you know, like Shanna sells homes, when people type in Shanna sells homes into the bar, they're going to be able to see a lot of your content that's been out there. Um, it's just a good way for people to search for you if they're not already following you on Instagram. Um, you can kind of say, hey, look at my hashtag. This is my brand. 
um, add some local content hashtags. Um, so, you know, uh, Grand Junction has West Slope, Best Slope, or you can do GJ Homes. Um, you know, uh, Idaho has hashtag Idaho Homes. Um, just make sure that you're kind of aware of those. We do have a hashtag list on our Change Lives Academy website if you're looking for some ideas for that. Um, and then you can use some of those big name hashtags such as, you know, hashtag real estate, hashtag real estate agent. Um, just know that you're one of millions of people using that hashtag. So don't just expect to use those big hashtags and get seen. And then again, social media sites are about being social. So make sure you're interacting with followers and other accounts. Um, and then the next one I want to talk about is LinkedIn. Um, so LinkedIn is going to be kind of your professional and networking um, site. Um, if you don't have a an account, go ahead and create one through LinkedIn.com. Um, make sure you're using your professional headshot cover photo. Um, add your job title and employer. Um, and make sure you connect with your employer so you can actually tag Coldwell Bank for Distinctive Properties as your employer on LinkedIn. Um, so that'll connect you to our page and give you some more exposure with connections. Um, update your About section, your contact info, add your education and skills. Um, there is a way to go in and follow your interest group and other companies, and then make sure you're connecting with people that you know. If you don't have a LinkedIn business profile, make sure your profile is public. Otherwise, you did all of that work to set up your LinkedIn profile, and nobody will see it. Um, some best practices. Um, LinkedIn um, refreshes pretty quickly, so make sure you're posting uh, two to four times per week to stay relevant, and again, interacting with other users. LinkedIn especially is about building connections, so they are really pushing um, people who interact and comment on other posts, share other posts. Um, they're also jumping on the bandwagon of pushing video content. Um, one of the nice things is they do recognize YouTube links, um, so you can actually share YouTube videos. So if you have a YouTube library, um, go ahead and share those. Um, LinkedIn is a good place for sharing longer videos because again, it's more of a professional networking site, so this is gonna be your um, expert advice videos, your tips and tricks, um, things like that that are really showcasing you as a professional. Um, and sharing links to informative articles and blogs is really huge on here as well. Um, if you wrote the article or blog, even better, share it back to your website. Um, this is a great place to share your awards, your recognitions, and really, again, just show off who you are as a professional. Um, and then hashtags are pretty relevant on LinkedIn. Um, they do kind of target what people are following in those interest groups. So think about what you're following and how that's relevant to you and use hashtags that are um, a mix of those as well. Um, so I want to go over some benefits of being on social media. Um, so Facebook and Instagram, um, your business accounts give you performance tracking features. So that allows you to see what kind of content is working for you, what may not be working so well, um, and just kind of reconfigure what you're posting um, and being able to see it um, work. You're able to target people with your ads. Um, and then just being on social media sites boosts your SEO because it's another place that you're online with your information. So when people are searching you, it just gives you more, um, more SEO because your name is out there more. Um, you're gonna be reaching different audiences than if you just have a website or um, just have one platform. The more platforms you are on, um, the more um, audiences you're gonna reach. Um, social sites, like I mentioned before, are designed to make connections. So this is going to be a way for people to get to know you, like you, and trust you. Um, the Meta Business Suite, like I mentioned before, that is a great um, tool to use that you can post to both Facebook and Instagram. You can see all of your insights in one place. Um, it's just kind of a hub for both platforms, so it's really nice. Um, you can connect these accounts to Social Bay, which helps give you um, some relevant real estate content with little effort on your end. Um, so Social Bay is already designed to share um, fun content. They already have captions that generate for you, and um, they do a lot of call to actions already. So if you are kind of a person who doesn't want to play around with your social media, I would recommend at least connecting to Social Bay so you have that presence. Um, and then just being on um, social sites gives you brand recognition. Um, LinkedIn especially is good, like I mentioned before, is, um, showing you as a professional and an industry leader. Um, it's a good place to connect with other professionals. Um, we've seen this work really well for our commercial real estate um, agents and brokers. Um, it's a good place to connect with people who are looking for development opportunities. Um, and it's the best place to share your brand and personal wins. LinkedIn is about promoting professionalism, so it's a good place to um, humble brag, if you will. And you can also connect your LinkedIn to Social Bay as well.
So I'm going to go to the next slide and turn it over to Amber to talk about um, Zillow and Realtor.com. Okay, so I'm going to start with the setup of Realtor.com. This takes about 10 minutes and it's relatively simple once you know the process. So if you go to your dashboard on Realtor.com and you don't have an account, just click sign up and then you'll add your email and follow the steps to create a password and then you can claim your profile. You need your MLS credentials, so your state and then whatever your MLS is in your area. Uh, for your agent ID, you have to add CBC in front of your MLS ID for it to work. And then you just sign in with those same credentials. To create your profile, just click the profile tab, manage your profile, and then add your agent information. So the NERDS number is crucial on Realtor.com because that's what connects your MLS to um, Realtor.com. So people can see the houses you've listed, the houses you've sold. It just gives them a better understanding of what's going on. Uh, you need your headshot, contact information, your designation, and then add your bio from your website and CBIQ so that they can see who you are and what you do. It's important to add uh, areas you've served as well. So when people type in realtor in Sun Valley or realtor in Grand Junction, you pop up. If you've also serviced surrounding areas, it's important to add that too so that you'll pop up in other areas as well. And then you'll need a header photo. It's kind of like Facebook on the back. Um, it just completes the profile and then you're done. For Zillow, the setup process is pretty similar. I usually just type in sign in Zillow and then the first link is where you can sign in. Uh, if you don't have an account, go to click new account, add your email and then create a password. And then it's really important to click the box that says I'm a landlord and, or industry professional because that'll allow you to create a profile as a real estate agent. And then just fill out the rest of that information on that page and you can click continue. When you're setting up your profile, you need your name, headshot again, we always recommend that you put the same headshot, especially on Realtor.com and Zillow, because they're they're not actual social media platforms. So it's important that they match your Facebook and Instagram. Um, add your professional category, your brokerage name, brokerage address, contact information, real estate license. This one is important as well on here, because that also connects MLS to the Zillow your bio from CDIQ, areas served, and the zip codes or city and your state. And then you just hit that submit. You just want them as complete as possible because otherwise people might look at it and not think that you're either a real real estate agent or they just don't think you've had a lot of productivity if you don't add anything extra. And then on the right side, you can click promote yourself on Zillow and they'll give you a drop down of about a list of five things and that'll show you how complete your profile is. The benefits of using Realtor.com and Zillow are they both have millions of viewers monthly. Uh, Zillow is currently ranked number one in the US for real estate websites. Uh, and then also getting reviews on these sites as well is really important because they boost you up. Um, they also boost your SEO and then people are visiting the websites because they are looking to buy or sell. It's not Instagram or Facebook where they're just searching to scroll. They're actually actively looking for a house or looking to sell their house. So it's a really great opportunity to get leads and then use them. Uh, best practices is your profile pictures are consistent between all of your social media platforms. This makes it easier for people to recognize you. The more times that they're seeing your face, the more they will recognize you. Add your specialties and expertise because that just makes your account more personalized and it shows people what you've accomplished as well, as well as adding your accomplishments. Your MLS, make sure your MLS is connected to both because that shows your productivity to everyone. And then reviews are always so important. On Realtor.com, they recommend getting five. I think Zillow is the same. Reviews are just so important as well on there.
And now, if you guys have any questions, we're happy to answer them. Um, I did see one in the chat from Crystal. Um, so she asked if the monthly calendar content could be automatically added to our social day account. Um, the answer to that is yes. Um, so there is a job form that we can have you fill out um, once you receive that job form, um, the monthly calendar content, we will go ahead and add that to your calendar. Um, and then you will get an email that notifies you when that um, information has been put on your calendar and you're welcome to review it from there. Um, and again, we do send that out um, typically um, in this week at Distinctive, we will send that out before the next month begins with all of the calendar content, we will send a Dropbox um, link so you can go in and preview it and make sure that everything looks good. Um, and of course, you can always um, email the marketing at marketing at um, if you have any questions or anything like that. Um, so we have a question about best practices for profile and cover photos. Um, make sure that you have a professional headshot. Um, it's, it's important to just, I mean, I, I know sometimes getting headshots done can be expensive, but it's important to have a professional headshot. That is your brand and that's who you are. Um, and taking a selfie um, just isn't the same effect. It's not going to show you as the professional that you are. Um, and a professional photographer is going to be able to really um, get the best lighting, make sure everything looks really good. Um, it's going to be it's going to be really important that you have a professional headshot. Um, and then your cover photo shouldn't be overly complicated. It should highlight your local area that you serve. It should highlight um, the brokerage that you're tied to so that people are aware of your brokerage. Um, and then that's, that's kind of it. You don't want anything over the top. Um, you can put, um, you know, maybe at the top or the bottom of your cover photo, um, your email and phone number. But again, keeping your cover photo simple is going to be important. It's more of just a visual eye draw than it is an information photo. Uh, okay. And then, Amber, do you want to answer this one? Should you share the same headshot across all platforms? Yes, you should. It's super important that everybody can recognize you from the same photo. Uh, at just when they type in your name, they'll be able to know if they see you on Facebook and then go to realtor.com and type your name in, they'll be able to find you easily that way. And again, um, you're paying for those very professional headshots, so you want to make sure that you're using them um, and definitely use that same photo across the board. Um, and then another thing with your headshot is, you know, make sure that you update it every few years. Um, I know that I am about due to update my headshot. I've been here almost two years now and I know I need a new headshot. I look different than when I started two years ago. So um, just kind of think about that. If you have a headshot that's 10 years old and you show up, um, you know, you don't want to be catfishing your clients with old headshots. All right, well, I think that is everything. Um, thank you guys, we really appreciate um, you taking the time to join us today.